Durdak, he's retired from the FBI. He was in charge of the North Carolina Bureau's polygraph unit, and he's very respected in his field. I tell him it's a pure of heart test. If you feel good in your heart, you're being honest, you're going to do fine. If you don't, your body shows it, and you don't do so good. It usually pretty much plays out that way. Hello there. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Hey, how are you? Steve McGee, MUFON. Steve, Bob Durdak, how are you? Chris Bledsoe. Chris, nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Right. Steve, thanks very much. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Chris is having no qualms about doing a polygraph. In fact, in the original report, he said he would take one. So we're going into this polygraph exam feeling very confident that uh, he's going to do well. Uh, the real lie detector in this whole equation is you, because you're the only one that knows the truth, and you're telling this, this instrument here what's going on inside your body, and that's what's, what we're determined, using to determine whether you're being truthful or not. If you will pull this around your lower stomach and just hold it right in the middle and kind of lean forward a little bit, I'm going to pull this around behind you. For months, I was scared to say anything for ridicule. I decided I had to get it off my chest or it's going to drive me insane. And the world needs to know it's real. It is real. I'm thinking if he comes out and passes, this is going to make this real easy. And it's going to shorten our time here. I suffer anxiety anyhow, that's part well, just, of it. Yeah, just try to be as relaxed as you can. Okay, ready to go? Yes, sir. Test is now beginning. Is your first name Christopher? Yes. Is there anything in your background that would cast doubt on your honesty or integrity? No. Did you make up any of the information concerning what you saw in the sky on the night in question? No. Have you conspired with anyone to provide false information regarding what happened on the night in question? No. Did you make up any of the information regarding the entity you reported seeing on the night in question? No. How would you summarize the test? Well, I'd say he failed the test. I'm going to tell you that his deceptive responses were focused around things that he actually saw that night. He wasn't being truthful about the entity? I don't think so. What do you think he was being truthful about? I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, it's, it's going to be a you know speculation no matter what I say. Is everything he said a lie? You, you can't gleam that just from the polygraph. You can gleam that from the investigation, the, the information you collect, and everything should fit at some point. Uh, did you make up any of the information concerning what you saw in the sky on the night in question? How did he score there? Well, uh, if you just took the numerical score, he would have been inconclusive on that. The one he had deceptive response to was the entity, seeing the entity. You know, he, he kept saying, I'm not sure myself when I think about it if I really saw it or not, but I know I did. He didn't come right out and tell us everything was a lie, but basically the part about the entity reflected negatively in the polygraph. I ended up doing two series. So even though I may feel disappointed, in the back of my mind, I'm saying reserve judgment. Reserve judgment. So you, you have to weigh all that evidence, and it really comes down to who do you believe. Essentially, it was negative. Basically, the operators telling us that uh, he, wasn't, uh, he wasn't being honest. He was neutral on the um, orange orbs, and he was neutral on the, um, the lights in the skies. I think we're all a little disappointed. Honestly, the, the relationship I've developed with Chris I really felt like I owed it to him to sit down and talk to him about it. This was going to be his chance to either confirm or deny that he still was going to stick to his guns or he was going to finally come out and admit that, no, guys, all right, you got me. We wanted to talk to you and get your reaction. Okay. Because I was basically going to hit him right between the eyes with it and see what he says. Hopefully, he'll benefit somehow, some way. MUFON annually investigates an average of 5,000 reported UFO sightings. Approximately 85% are dismissed as either misidentification of natural phenomenon, man-made activity, or deliberate hoax. 15% remain unexplained. We were really concerned and wanted to talk to you and get your reaction. Okay. 
it was an uncomfortable time because I was basically going to hit him right between the eyes with it and see what he says. The question about the entity is where the, the concern came in. Okay. And basically the result on as far as the entity was concerned was, was negative. Okay. Now I'm trying to help you figure this all out. It was tense. Tell me what you think about it. it was uncomfortable for us because we knew it would make him uncomfortable. We really needed to know what he was going to say. I know my mind. Remember me telling you there's like two parts of me. There's an inner part that says this was there. And there's an outer part that says mm, maybe, maybe not. But I know what I saw. And I have nightmares with it. It never leaves my mind. And it was there. I'd stake my life on it. It was tough. It was tough not to believe him. He was so sincere and so strong about what he was saying. Well, I know what I saw. There is no doubt in my mind what I saw. Whatever this machine says, I don't know. Um, and don't care. But I know what I saw. And I go over, over and over in my mind because it's hard to believe yourself. He stuck to his guns. Uh, he was uh, very sincere. So in my mind, the story still goes. I mean, the story still seems credible. After all this, Chris still insists that he saw three UFOs and he had an alien encounter on January 8, 2007. Now that the animation has given us this very vivid description of the object, we can check our archives to see if somebody else had a similar sighting. In cases like this, you really just have to pull all the stops and make sure you're covering all your bases. Gathering corroborative information from law enforcement, from the local newspapers and media to see who else may have reported something similar. Yes, I'm with uh, MUFON, I'm a field investigator, and I was wondering if you could check your newspaper archives for an unusual sighting, January 8th of 2007. We contacted the local military installations, the airports, trying to find somebody else who may have reported this or may have seen things, and we came up with nothing. As I scrolled down on our case management system, uh, the, the time frame of the uh, Bledsoe sighting, um, as I look here, uh, we've got a submission on uh, January the 9th, 2007. One of the interesting aspects about the Bledsoe case is Chris Sr.'s description of the craft at the top of the hill. What struck me as I'm going back through the MUFON archives is we found a similar case from 2001 up in Wisconsin where the craft that was seen there was almost identical to what Chris was describing. The whole egg shape and the protrusions. In fact, when I put them side by side, I was amazed at how similar they were. Basically describes the same thing as the witnesses in the case that we're working on right now. To have two cases in different parts of the country, different time frames, where both craft are so similar is just amazing. Now that we have this other sighting from Wisconsin, the question is, is this coincidence? Is it a collective fantasy? Or are people really witnessing the same object in different states? Based on the year differences, I would have to say they're seeing the same object. So would you crawl over one of those guys? Yeah, I'll see how Let's talk works. about closure on something like this. The reality is that when you work on a case like this, you never get a cut and dry solution. We have a lot of evidence, a lot of information, a lot of testimony, and we'll never know for sure exactly what happened. So it's frustrating to us that we haven't been able to gather the necessary data we want to prove that something really happened, but at the same time, we know this is happening, uh, we know that people are experiencing this, and we really would be remiss if we didn't investigate it. We can't simply ignore it. These are things that are happening to people every day, and they're having these experiences, so we want to be there to be able to not only try to figure out what's going on, but try to secure some sort of proof that this is a reality. It's all right, come on out here. What do you think? I don't know what to think. You don't? Mm -mm. Chris Jr. and Chris Sr. had a very reality-altering event. 
I, th I think this case shows that we're dealing with a real phenomena here. And it's important for folks to know this is not science fiction. This is science fact. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It's been tough, but it all come out good. All right, bud. I'll see you later. Thank you, Richard. Um, Thank you. See you later, man. See you later, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> it's worse if you're quiet about it. It'll never leave what I saw. And one day, one day, uh, everybody will know the truth. One day.